Hello and welcome to tutorial 80 in the series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're watching this on YouTube, then please go to markplex.com. That's M A R K P L E X.com and you will find there many other tutorials and programs and information about TradeStation Easy Language. So, what I wanted to do in this tutorial is talk about set dollar trailing which is one of the TradeStation built-in uh, target and stops. And there's many good reasons for using this. Um, in particular, it gives you entry bar protection and it also will track individual trades within a pyramid trade. But one of the things that it doesn't do is show you where those trails are on the chart. And you can see here what I've done, even though I'm using the trailing stop, I'm also I've also drawn some lines and some symbols just to give me an idea where the trail is at any one particular time. And these are just two dummy trades, but uh, I've created them just so I can demonstrate how you would go about creating lines or text objects on the chart so you could see where the trail is at any time. So what I've done, I've created a new strategy which is already applied to the chart. And what I've done, I've deleted the uh, parts of the strategy which draw the lines. So we're going to recreate those but first of all, just let me explain the inputs and so forth that I've created here. Uh, num ticks, this is just the number of ticks that are going to be in our trail. I've then calculated within the variables tick val, and that is equal to the min move divided by price scale. I've created a variable that we're going to store our trailing value in. Now, if we do want to draw those lines, we need to replicate the calculation that TradeStation is doing so that we can then draw lines giving us an idea where that value is at any one bar. Uh, MP is storing the market position and then I've just created two dummy trades just because they show a price move that I want to demonstrate and uh, you can see those just on June 28th. That's uh, 112 2012 06 June 28th. First one at 4.30, second one at 7.25 and then the set dollar trailing and you can right click that and see a definition of it if you wish to and that is equal to num ticks which in the current case is 10 times by the tick value times by big point value and if we just go back to the chart now we should see those trails in exactly the same place they were before but what I want to do is add some functionality so we can see some lines I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing that so we're going to say if market position is minus one in other words we're in we are short then begin and we're going to say s trail is equal to the min list of s trail so we're saying if it is smaller than it is at the moment and we're going to compare that with low plus num ticks times tick file. Oh and incidentally I should mention that uh, I've got commission set to zero and slippage set to zero in this demonstration just to make things a little more simple. Then I'm going to say value one is equal to tl underscore new date one bar ago time one bar ago s trail one bar ago and date time s trail so we're drawing little little line segments between the value of the trail currently and what it was the previous bar let's just say end for the moment and i'll show you a couple of different things you could do here and uh, what we also need to do is because we've got two trades here we need to think of some way of being able to reset the uh, s trail value so we're going to do that we're going to say if market position equals zero then s trail equals and then we're just going to put in this arbitrary large number now in this particular case i know that there is an occasion where there is, the market position becomes zero between the two trades okay i just misspelled there so it's s trail so let's verify and let's go to the chart and we should see some lines now for both trades okay so we can see some lines here and what we're doing is we're drawing from what the trailing value is this bar to what it was 
the previous bar in each case. Now you'll notice one thing is that we don't seem to have continued it to the point where we actually get out of the trade and that is because at that bar by the end of that bar the market position is no longer minus one so we need to just add a little bit of functionality to take care of that and we're going to say if market position one bar ago is equal to minus one and market position this bar is not equal to minus one then and then what we're going to do is just draw one more line so I'm just going to copy this except I'm just going to change that to S trail there so let's verify this again see what we get okay so you'll see now that the line continues right to the point where we we get out of the trade so that's one way of doing it another thing we could do is we could create a line but instead of doing it to the value of what the trailing stop was last far we could do it to what the trailing stop was this bar so I'm going to change the color of this so I'm going to change S trail from S trail one bar ago to S trail this bar and I'm going to uh, TL set color of value 2 to be red so we can distinguish it from the other line I'm going to press F3 and let's go back to the chart okay so now you can see instead of the lines joining up we've got these horizontal red lines drawn instead of the the sloping blue lines but at, at each particular case we can see the what the trailing value is at a particular bar now another way you could do it which is easy but not quite as easy to see would be to use text objects so we could say value 3 equals text new and we could put in the the date the time the s trail and we could draw some sort of symbol so for example we could just put in a dash like so going to press f3 again go back to the chart okay and you can see the dashes now the problem is that the positioning of them is not as accurate as the drawing the lines on the chart so they're a quick and easy way of giving you some idea where that trail is but uh, not hugely accurate but one thing you'll notice here say for example if we look at this bar is it seems like the price action of the bar goes through the trailing stop and uh, and yet we don't we don't stop out so what I wanted to do is just explain that now just to show you what settings I've got here I've set up this chart so that we've got uh, look inside bar back testing at a granularity of one tick and also I've set up calculation enable intrabar order generation and calculation so what I'm going to do is create a print statement and we're going to draw print some information to a file so what I'm going to do is select that particular bar which is on in 2012 so that would be 112 it's on in June and it's the 28th and time is equal to 0450 so then print and I'm going to call the file C backslash tutorials 80.txt close the brackets and we're going to print there the date the time the close and we're also going to put in the s trail value like so so what I'm going to do is verify this and then I've already uh, actually opened this text file from previously and so what we can do is go through and look at the price movements this is tick by tick by tick and you'll see that at the start of the bar the trail is s trail is uh, 1322.75 but you'll see that by the end of the bar 
it calculates to 1322. So the reason that we're not actually stopping out is because earlier on the price does touch the 1322 and greater but at that point the trailing value is 1322.75 and as price then goes down the uh, trailing value actually changes because the low actually gets lower throughout the uh, the, the uh, progression of the bar so just to explain why we get the situation of the bars actually crossing over those trailing value lines anyway i hope this is a technique that you might be able to use in your programming thank you